Hello again, this is Heather Martin. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about chronic pain and chronic pain issues. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you, this is going to be a short video because I've had a very busy week but I wanted to get something up and I wanted to talk a little bit about the nature of addiction itself because part of this problem, part of the misunderstanding about pain medicine comes to the way that most people don't really even understand addiction or what it is or how it works. And part of the reason for this problem is that most of what we understand about addiction is based on rat studies that were done in the 1950s and 1960s. In these studies, typical with many animal experiments, it was bad science to begin with because the rats were kept in isolation in small cages and they were equipped with a pump similar to the morphine pumps that a rat could operate and continually dose itself with opiates such as heroin. These studies saw that the rats in this condition would dose themselves and dose themselves until they eventually succumbed to death. So that fostered the idea that these opiates are so magically addicting that it'll take a perfectly normal person and turn them into a slave taking this medicine over and over until the eventual result in death. Now, in the, the late 1970s, a young researcher named Alexander, uh, Bruce K. Alexander was his name, last name was Alexander, and he was studying at the Simon Fraser University in British Columbia, Canada. He looked at those rat studies and he saw the problems that were inherent in them, the small cages, the isolated rats, the unnatural circumstances in which these animals were put into. So he recreated the study and there's a wonderful comic that I'm linking you to in the description of this video done by an artist named Stuart McMillan, which goes into great detail about the studies and how they were actually conducted. But I'm just going to give you a brief overview. The most striking feature of Alexander's study is that the rats were not in isolation. They were in a large enclosure given other rats to socialize with physical elements, toys, things to play with, the complete opposite of the rats that were in the solitary isolation with the opiates. These same rats were offered opiates. And while they did use opiates occasionally, recreationally, no rat in the rat park, it's called a rat park experiment because he built a large enclosure, park-like setting for all these rats, and in a normal social environment, the rats did not become addicted. They did not use opiates to the point of death. So he was really doing groundbreaking research that showed that our understanding of opiates and addiction is not a matter of people's relationship with a substance, but an overall larger social picture. What really drives addiction? And what we can see from these studies is that certainly isolation, entrapment, feeling hopeless, feeling completely alone are factors that can drive addiction. And they're, very, they're things that the prohibition against medicines, against drugs, that the culture of control creates. The, the more we seek to control substances, to control drug abuse, to make substances illegal, the more we're driving addiction in our culture, the more we're showing youth that this is something cool, this is something forbidden, and creating that kind of ambiance about something, this sort of false picture. Whereas if we look into studies like what Alexander was doing, it, it's a it's a greater societal issue. Now also, if you're curious about addiction, you may want to go on to YouTube here and you can see many of the episodes of a show called Strange Addictions. 
very interesting to sit and watch through a few of these episodes because you realize that people can become addicted to anything. It does not have to be a chemical substance. People can be addicted to sex. People can be addicted to gambling. People can be addicted to eating couch cushions. People can be addicted to smelling gasoline. Imagine a world in which we try to control all of these addictions by limiting common substances and instead of recognizing them as medical issues and trying to reach out to the individuals for treatment. So I wanted to talk about that today because like when we did our protest up in Albany and talked to someone who was actually from a methadone clinic, I brought up the subject of the Rat Park experiments. At Simon Fraser University, and a person working in a methadone clinic administering treatment to addicted patients did not, she'd never heard of this study. And I think it's scary that we have people in the field treating addiction and working in legislation that don't understand the study, that don't understand even what addiction is, that are dealing with a wrong, an antiquated idea that comes from tortured rats in a scientific experiment that was faulty to begin with. So that's my episode for today and uh, I want you to check the description of this video. I'm leaving you a link to the wonderful comic about Rat Park and also to the National Pain Patients Coalition petition something that you should pass around and share and try to get as many signatures as possible. Also read the comments that have already been made there to hear the stories of other people dealing with the same issues. People who are having their pain medicine and their quality of life taken away from them. Also I will leave in the comments a link about a very, a very strong activist and a brave doctor who continued to treat chronic pain and who's facing all of the repercussions for doing that, who's facing persecution because he refused to stop treating pain. I'm going to leave you links to him and hope that if you're in a position to please support his fight. We need to support all the doctors out there who are struggling to get their licenses back, to get their practices back, and most importantly to continue treating patients because it's becoming very hard for us patients to find doctors that will treat because they're being driven underground, because they're dri being driven out of practice. and. We all need to stand together and fight this. So thank you for tuning in, and uh, please subscribe, and there will be more videos coming. See you soon.